Hi, this is your life coach, Gloria, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, your life coach, leadership coach, motivational speaker, and health coach, and welcome to another episode, Life's a Shuffle, because it really is shuffling a bunch of different pieces all at once. So today is free style Thursday, no topic, and we're just catching up on the week. And I think one of the biggest things I just got today, literally today, just like an hour ago, was the fact that all my divorce paperwork is finalized and it's been submitted to the judge. I just can't wait for the stamp. So I'm done forever. <laughs> oh my God, you have no idea. I, I'm just happy. I mean, I, I think I expressed a few people last week and then this is the funny thing. So if you listen to my podcast, I've been married for 13 years and I got married I was 22 to an older woman and had four kids and she just pretty much put it on me. Sex was good. You know, that's what got me. It's just sex was just good. And it's like, I never had it in my life. And I, I know a lot of young men or women out there experiencing when they experience something for the first time, especially for someone that has um, a subdued sexual, um, I guess you would say, uh, gratification, meaning that how I show love and how I want to receive love and how I give love is through uh, touch, feel, and sex. So Anyway, so she put it on me, and I thought the way to keep her from cheating on me was to marry her. So I married her, and that was a, a disaster. And finally, after 13 years of just being lazy, it's not the fact that it lasts for 13 years. I was just lazy. I didn't do paperwork. Uh, it, you know, anyway, so it's done. I even had to pay for her notary. So basically, I had to pay for her the next day air doctors to the lawyer I had to pay for her notary then she hits me up with this hey i'm out here and it's hot keeps me an extra five dollars so i can get some fruit mm -hmm. i'm like at some point in your life i say you know what just here's the money okay just, just get let's get it done okay i don't understand what the issue is you you have 45 dollars, and this is documentation that i'm paying for so i'm paying for the attorney i'm paying for all these because anytime you send an attorney something you send a, a documentation i want to follow up if it takes them 10 minutes to do it or it takes them one minute to do it, boom, that's 10 bucks right there. That, that, that's it. If, if it's a long email with a bunch of questions, it takes them an hour to respond to it, that's $400. Just, just respond to an email. So attorneys making a lot of money charging by the email and them calling her to facilitate paperwork, it cost me money too. So I had to pay $45 for some fruits that she needs because it's cold or she's hot. And I had to pay for a notary that she has for hers, not mine. And also pay for next year information. So the reason why there are 13 years, I can't wait till this thing is closed forever. I think what gets to me is the whole thing of send me money for fruits, you know, and it's interesting. But, you know, some people are, I, I don't, you know, there's just people like that. Uh, what, what I call it, I call it the hustle mentality. People like that, mm -hmm. like the hustle. So instead of say, okay, how can I work to make my own money? Or how can I hustle five dollars to somebody else? But mm. then you realize that really, if you just worked, you'll have more than five dollars in your pocket. But you always want to hustle. So the reason why you can't get ahead because you always want to hustle and nickel and dime someone to death for five bucks. So I mean, God bless so that's, whatever. That's like going nature through. for her. Let's say it one more time. That's nature for her. It's hustling. That that just comes natural for her. Uh, for a lot of people out there, you know, they think they're they're, they're getting ahead and they think they're doing the right thing, and then they're, they're um they think they're on the right path, and yeah, really, you're not on the right path because you're hustling people for five dollars. Mm -hmm. But right, and, and I, I had to call and harass her to even sign paperwork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like I had, I'm, I'm calling, I'm sending emails, not picking up the phone. I'm like, what 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 the hell? <laughs> then I get a text from her two days ago. Um, happy Monday. Nice. I don't, what do I say to that? <laughs> Happy Monday to you too. <laughs> no response. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's us. Awesome. No response. <laughs> nice day. That's a luck. Yeah, it's it's just it's just really um, interesting how you know there's how people are and you know there's everyone's just really different and it's, it, sometimes there's things that you don't understand why certain people do what they do and why they are the way they are. But to them, they're normal. To them, they're okay. You know? Well, I guess, you know what? I'm judging and I know better to be judgy, but the reality is that doesn't resonate in my lifestyle. And I don't want that. So fantastic. 
a new word now, that 13 years ago when um, she left me destitute, I never cried so hard over a person in my, in my life. It actually crushed me. So she le- when she left me in 2007, I think, um, my relationships from 2007 onward were just a disaster for like, a disaster. That's all I got to say. For the last 13 years, 12 years, it's been a disaster because I made a commitment to myself. When I broke down crying, because I first moved out here and I had no friends, nobody, right? So she gives me back the ring. Her baby's dad drives up here. So not only did he drive up here, picked her and her four kids up, gave me back the ring, left me destitute. And I responded for the rent. I made all these arrangements. I mean, my heart was broken. And, you know, I said to myself, I'll never love a woman again. I will never cry over a woman again. And that's how I perceived a relationship. So if I got involved with a woman and it, I was afraid of not working out, afraid of getting my heart, I'm trying to find a backup plan. So if it's going good for six months, oh shit, something's going to happen. I got to sit down and have a backup plan because if this fails in six months, I have to make sure I have something on side. The, the reality is I was afraid of being alone. And the reality is I was afraid to love. So, you know, it's having this weight off my shoulder is this so much more I, I even though if we don't have kids together we don't have a 401k plan no house nothing we own zero assets but knowing this big mountain of crap has been on my plate now for years over a decade to finally brush it off it's like dust my shoulders off like jay-z i'm gonna dust my shoulders off you know so <laughs> i'm excited you, about Jay-Z. that you know and pop my collar too at, at the same time <laughs> because oh, yeah. uh you had to work on that. We need to see that and then see you uh, with some beatbox and rapping. I'm not no, going to you know what? <laughs> you're, not, you're not ready. I already got a video in mind. I'm going to shoot tomorrow and I'm going to sing uh, Natural High. I, I got a plan. You're going to see it. I'm going to shoot a video talking about Natural High. It, it's going to be great. Just all I got to say. You're going to sing. I can't wait for this. Are you going to sing, take to the sky on a natural high, <laughs> loving you more till the day I die? See, I, see, I don't know. I may need to get a part-time job as a singer or something. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> All right. I can't wait. Now, are can't you always going to sing parts of it or? I'm going to sing part of it. No. Okay. Let, let's, let's get it straight here. I'm just <laughs> I'm kidding. Say, no. <laughs> whole lyrics, but I know. Okay? All right. Um, so it's going to be a cappella too. Oh, yeah. Lip sync or something. Who knows? I got it. I got it. That's cool. Well, you know what? Congratulations. So you're closer to the end of it. Closer. Maybe one more step and, you know. As a matter of fact, I looked at the case so much on Mm LACourt.com. I memorized that case number. Okay. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) Make sure it says stamp it approved, okay? You're really a sucker. Yeah. Well, you're almost there. You'll get there. Almost there. Very close. And that's cool. Congratulations. No, we'll say the congratulations when it's really, really finalized, I guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm hoping my time finalized. Vegas is open. So I can go order bottle service just for myself. <laughs> <laughs> my own bottle service. You know, order for like shower, people yourself, order for shower yourself with that. Right, you know, Vegas is shopping. already open, by the way. I know, but I'm going to find a Vegas. <laughs> Too hot. I like cold weather. Too hot for me right now. Well, that's cool. What else is up? So, you know what? Um, I've been thinking too, like lately, what's been happening around a lot is this whole, um, like the elections. It's 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 happening. It, it's a lot of people talking about it. You see it everywhere on the news, the social media. You hear people talking about it at the stores, in the salons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like I'm just so tired of it. No, I don't know. That's just me. Well, you know, it's a big thing. Um, you know, a lot of people can't stand Trump. A lot of people want Biden. A lot of things politically are going on. I, I think which kind of is an eye opener for me is coming from California and going to Bellingham, Washington. It's pretty paramount out here. People have front of their lawn, Biden or Harris, or the big sign says Trump Pence, or they have a sign says Black Life Matter. So in California, you don't know who supports what unless they have a bumper sticker. But if you look around, right, just looking at your neighbors, how many neighbors have in the front lawn a Biden Harris sign? Probably maybe none. How many have a Trump sign? People are afraid to have Trump sign. And it's really kind of sad the fact that we live in a great country where you have the right to vote. So 
And, and see, here's the thing. Voting is all about this very simple thing, opinions and how you feel. Mm-hmm. Right? So we, I met with, uh, Karina and I met with this girl named Christina. She's going to be president 2020, 2036, she said. And, you know, obviously she supports Biden-Harris, which is, hey, whatever, um, Black Lives BLM, she supports that as well. But um, we talked about politics briefly and was the fact that a lot of people don't do research on actual facts. Right. It's all emotional right now. Mm-hmm. Right. Right now, this election and, and voting, it's all emotional. There's no facts. Mm-hmm. Like another emotional one is if you wear American flag, you're a Trump supporter. That's right, not really right. true. America is America. I, I, I say this. Well, when I stay in my Airbnb, first time I roll up and I see American flag. Oh, my God. I, I'm judging, right? American flag. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe it's maybe racist. Trump supporter. I, it doesn't matter. But as wasn't true, the people are actually gay or lesbian, I think. They're all about Biden Harris and BLM. But how the American flag now becomes the way we perceive as someone has American flag, they're downright racist. Yeah, remember I told you, I think I told you the story about my mom wearing um, a shirt with an American flag. And um, I think it was one lady that works at the facility where she works at had said something to her. Yeah, you told me about that. Yeah. that story. Yeah, yeah. And how she's like, you know, she's wearing in. The lady's like, oh, why are you wearing that? Are you supporting Donald Trump? And she's like, does it matter? I live in America, so I'm supporting America. <laughs> but... My point, you know, here's what I want to say about this. Why not? Let's just all respect, respect each other's opinion or just respect each other. Everybody has the right. Everybody has a right to their own opinion. Um, Like I, I don't need to explain myself to you if I'm going to vote who I'm voting for and why. Um, I, you know, I, I, I hate, I don't like talking politics with, with anybody, with my friends. Uh, my family and I don't talk politics, but sometimes even with strangers, because it just kind of gets out of hand. Um, people, when people are, they when they have their mindset, you can't argue with that. You can't argue with them anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, so why even bother asking me? Why, why listen to me when you already have your mindset anyway? Let's just, you know, at this point, uh, the way I see it, let's just, you know, respect each other, um, respect each other's opinion and vote. If you're going to vote, then just vote and let's see what happens, you know, um, and whichever president you vote for, that's what you voted for. But let's not later on take it back and say, oh, my God, he's not doing well for the country or we, but you voted for them, you know, so. Let's just vote in what you believe in. And if you really believe in it, everybody has their own different beliefs. I I do, you know, um, but yeah, let's just leave it at that. And that's what it is. See, see, that's the biggest social dilemma that we're facing is someone's opinion is exactly right. And someone's opinion that's opposite their opinion is wrong. Mm-hmm. And that's the social dilemma. We don't talk about it. So it's very ironic. We talk to locals here in Bellingham. People are like, oh, you guys don't have signs in your, your lawn about the BLM. Oh, hell no, because some may be upset about it. Because unlike how it was in Bay Area, California, with the rioting going on, the BLM, people are upset, people are looting. That didn't happen out here. So when BLM is happening, people are supporting BLM. You see people on people's lawns and the houses or businesses. It's okay. Out there in California, you get ridings at the Target. So what happens in the even though it's not BLM, it's these people that are taking this and use it as a way or excuse to vent or whatever mm-hmm. and tear and destroying property. That didn't happen out here. So why it's okay to to promote or support whatever you want to support or your belief or your opinion, it's fine. No one's going to say you're right or wrong. In California, you, you're right. If you support Biden Harris, you're right. If you support Donald Trump, you're wrong. And we as a society, and that's why we, it's divided is getting wider and wider because we don't sit down and have conversations and say, okay, you believe in Trump? Great. I believe in Biden. Great. And Steve does that. Mm-hmm. Like Karina, I don't talk politics to her because she's talk, call, called me several times because I don't vote. I'm a Trump supporter. And I remember got in a conversation about the fact that I was like, hey, you know, you can't vote for anybody president, right? I mean, all of us are have issues and errors. You vote for Trump, someone's not going to like it. You vote for Biden, someone's not going to like it. So you vote for the best one. 
well, you know, I, I don't know. You, you don't argue facts. Biden is the best one. In reality, I mean, I, I look at this. <laughs> Biden, Trump, out of all the millions of people we got in America that are smart and intelligent, those are the two best candidates we got? That's, those are the two? The best? <laughs> those, those, those are the best? If you, if you want to vote, you really have, you don't have any no choice. choice. <laughs> you yeah. find lesser evil. So that's two best candidates? So also, uh, another opinion could be, if some people are tired of seeing a career politician. They're tired of seeing someone like Biden has been a career politician forever. Someone to see somebody else that's an average. Because think about it, Trump never held office of any no, kind. He was Senate, he, mayor, he governor, really nothing. Into politics. He was more like Hollywood. He was making money. He's a sales businessman. You know, he's, he was a businessman. That's what he was. Although he was probably close to a lot of the politicians, you know, because he's got the money. Yeah, of course. See, that's that's the main thing: politics and money. Yeah, it, it, it's funny because, like, I know, um, you know, we talk about this, and, and this happened recently to uh, a friend. And you know, one friend posted something on social media towards um, against Biden. So then the other friend then sends me a text says, "Oh, is she Republican?" I said, "Well, because she posted something against." Biden makes her a Republican and a Donald Trump supporter. Uh, wow. And then the answer, the answer was, oh, I don't know. So it's an assumption, right? Yep. It, it, that, that doesn't mean anything. We don't know who she's supporting. We don't know if she's going to vote. We don't even know if she supports any of those two. You know, she w just posted something that was just making fun of the other. And I was at the salon um, sometime last week at the hair salon. And, you know, I heard um, the the owner was doing another guy's hair and they were just talking smash about Donald Trump. Right. Just a lot of stuff. So my hairdresser and the other lady was there and I think they were getting offended by it because um, they're not a Trump supporter, I would say but they're also not a Biden supporter. But if they had a choice, because if they're going to vote and they had a choice of who they were going to vote, I already know who they're going to vote for because they told me. So they're going to vote for Trump. And, you know, we had to look at all this and we, it was, um, it was a discussion. I know this is funny. It was a discussion there. What it was, was, um, and I understood what the two ladies meant and the, the man in that room didn't quite understand what they were trying to say. I think it's because they had their mindset already in whatever opinion they have. Have they done their research? I have no idea. You know, and, and these two other ladies, have they done their research? Probably not also, but I see their point and, and I understand because I feel the same way as they do. You know, I'm not going to judge somebody based on what you see in the social media, based on what the media says about this person and the other people. Okay. Call him racist. If he's racist, then he's racist to you. If he is right, he's not hurting me. And if he's not hurting you, but is he doing great for the country? He probably is. The, what I look at in a person is the actions, the things that this person had done for the country. I know he has no filter. He'll say whatever he wants to say. <laughs> He's not ashamed, you know, um, which is a, a good thing, right? Because he is his own person. And a lot of people does not accept that. So Trump being him, himself, his, that is his authentic self that he's showing to the people. A lot of people does not accept it. But does that stop him from being himself? No, it doesn't. And just like um, I had this conversation with uh, another friend about, oh, one of my students about Chris Brown. I know this is totally off that, off politics, Chris Brown. So you talk about Chris Brown and I said, yeah, I like his music and, you know, I, I, I love his songs. And I hear something about, oh, you're going to like somebody who beats up a, a woman. You're going to like somebody who, whatever he does with a woman, right, with, with Rihanna, whatever situation they had before. I said, I don't care about what he does. I don't care about what he did, whether it's true or not. I said, but I like his music. I like him as an entertainer. 
I don't know him as a person, so I can't say that I don't like him because he's beating up somebody. But he's entertaining me, and I love his music, <laughs> you know? So it, it's just just the stuff like this, like judging people based on, you know, again, what you hear and what you see. And, you know, you talk about have you done your research. And a lot of these people, pro- I, I, I don't want to, I don't know if I'm probably going to get some hatred here, but a lot of these people probably have not done any of the researches. Nope, because there is only emotions. Everything in life, but, you know, I think I gave this description on our podcast before. So when I go to Bellingham Fitness, all I see is CNN and I say Fox News. They can talk about the same subject, but everybody has a different opinion about something. And how we get life is truly subjective. We, never, we don't even do a research. We go based on what someone else said, and we're going to believe that. And we never sit down and say, okay, well, someone said this. Let me go research the facts and find out, is that really true? I, I, I don't know. We just take it for face value. Or we, our emotions get tied up in the situation. So our emotions get tied up in the situation based upon our own belief system. And that becomes the way we view things is based upon our own belief system. So then you say, well, I believe this because you believe that would be right for you, but doesn't mean right for everybody else. So I had a client one time, same thing. She's talking about R. Kelly. I, I don't know what R. Kelly did. I know he did some kind of crazy stuff. But we don't know the ins and outs, okay? I don't know all the specifics. I wasn't there. She says, yeah, some people hate R. Kelly, but I like listening to his music. Mm-hmm. I, that's, again, I, I, she's not right or wrong. She's entitled to listen to his music. Doesn't mean I like the person. I just like what they produce. What they mm-hmm. produce and the exactly. person are two different things. Right. That's it. I mean, we don't get mad at people. We don't get mad at someone out there that plays a good basketball game, but then gets high. Oh, he got high. Okay, but he had a good game. You know, mm-hmm. whatever you want to do in life and whatever works best for you is really just what what resonates higher in your level of consciousness. And you may not like or even know Chris Brown. You don't, you don't know about him. It's Chris Brown. Yeah, his real name. No, I have no I idea. Do him. <laughs> don't know. Oh, but he gets good music. I, I kind of like it. Like I like some Chris Brown's music. Doesn't mean do I agree with what he did? I, I don't know all the facts. I wasn't there. I, I didn't do the research. I was going to base on what he said. He beat somebody up. Again, I don't know all the facts. I didn't do my research. So I, I don't have no, more, no opinion about anything I don't research about. It's just, See, yeah. if you notice here, I always talk about consciousness and, consciousness and, and being coached and all these things because I've researched those. I know facts. And mm-hmm. I continue to learn and research facts. Doesn't mean something is right or wrong. Like, for example, the, the Jay Shetty book, you recommend that a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And I was going to go buy it, put it in my Amazon cart, and... You know, so happened I just looked at the reviews and uh, yes, yeah, so, 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 several comments saying that he's copied other people's words. I, I don't remember the names he copied, but he copied people's words. And it really says, well, yeah, he may copy somebody else's words or took some words and reformatted it to be his own context. Don't know. But in reality, if you read Jim Rohn, which is from an old dude from the 80s, right, from the 60s, may not resonate high with someone that's in 2020. You pick up Jay Shetty's book, someone that's in 2020, that's a young adult or someone trying to find themselves, he may be what they're looking for. So, and granted, it doesn't matter if whatever was said 100 years ago, 20 years ago, or 15 years ago, it help, it's helping somebody out right now. Mm-hmm. And that somebody that wrote that book is now helping out that person that they can connect with. See, a book is about who you can connect with, not what's right or wrong. Mm-hmm. And and again, we don't know, you know, if if whoever had said that, um, we don't know what influence Jay Shetty or what that person had towards Jay Shetty. You know, we talk about this like a domino effect, right? It could mm-hmm. be something similar to that. It could be like what we're doing right now. We're making an impact and someone will take our words and use it and then make an impact on somebody else. And I don't care. You know, it, it's it, it's like a... A domino effect because I may I I made an influence in someone else and then that someone else will make an influence in someone else using mine. You know, it's it's the same thing, but that's it, it's again, it's just what matters. Like to me, what matters is, you know, just making an impact on somebody. Like who who's gonna sit there and have this time to do all that research and reading and say, Oh my God, he copied those words from somebody else. You know what? Someone did it. I saw. I saw the review. It's like what? I looked at. It, it's like more than once. Two I saw. I didn't wow. need to rest. Yeah. Thousands there, there. But that's crazy. Uh, 
end of the day, if you have parents, right? We all have parents. Somebody taught them something. They didn't teach us something. Do we say to our parents, hey, by the way, so-and-so, 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 so-and-so taught you this. Why are you not telling me that? We don't care. They just teach us something. Mm-hmm. So if he's teaching something and now applies to someone that resonates high with him, means he's, he's in modern twenty twenty and you know he's a good looking guy and he that's who cares? Because we don't go back and tell our parents who taught you this, then who taught you the then why copying them. We don't, <laughs> we just listen. Same same thing applies. Because we gotta realize inherently in life we're all teachers and students, but we keep thinking we're not. See, someone taught Jay Shetty. Then and someone I'm that, teaching that's, somebody else. Exactly. No, and the person that's taught Jay Shetty, that person taught somebody else too. So mm-hmm. it's a long monks uh, teach other monks. Mm-hmm. So I was say monk. You know, someone teaches you what is monk. What does that mean? Someone teaches you about spirituality, Christianity. You know, they teach you all these things, and that's how it makes us a teacher. Because then we didn't pass what we learned to the next person. And that's really the cycle of life is passing along the knowledge and experience you have. To hopefully make society better or make someone else's life just better in general. And again, I talk about respect. So let's, why can't we just sit back and respect that? You know, but unfortunately, that's not the kind of world that we live in. Um, I'm just going to put it out there again. You know, we're all different. Everyone's different. So I have to have respect for those kind of people too. And um, yeah. I just, I don't want to judge anyone. Speaking of judge, I was being judged at school. Oh, uh, what happened there? Um, well, the school I work for. Um, <laughs> there's this girl who one day just made a comment, um, a comment to me. And now it made me think like, I wonder how many other parents out there looks at me this way or other kids, right? And she made this comment to me and she says, Coach Gloria, you're a tomboy, huh? <laughs> and that caught me off guard, right? And I was sitting there just watching. And I was just like, what? And I'm thinking, what do you mean I'm a tomboy? So I said, explain that to me. What do you mean by that? Make me understand. And, you know, she kind of, you know, explained it a little bit more like um, because of the way I dress. Um. I said, so how do I dress? What's wrong? Is there anything wrong with the way I dress? You know, you're you're a female. You don't wear skirts, dresses. I always see you in like guys type of clothing and shorts, tennis shoes. I said, tights, those leggings. I don't think hardly any guys wear <laughs> leggings, right? That's it's a female pants. And, you know, she's like, yeah, but, you know, and, and the way you move, the way you act. And then, you know, and you're you're always talking to all the boys here and you, you play around and mess around with the boys a lot because you know what? One is because I have two boys. So I can really relate with, with how obnoxious those little boys get sometimes. Right. And I, I run around with them and I mess around with them and I joke around with them because sometimes girls are just very, really too girly for me. Drama. So the best thing to do is to kind of just leave them alone and leave them in their own little circle. And then I'll go somewhere where I'm going to have fun and uh, won't take things seriously. And just, you know, I look at I look at the boys, they're just living their life. They're minding their business. They're playing. They're playing games. And I want to do something like that. So let me go and play with them and run around with them, you know. And so she made that comment to me and I thought, that's interesting. And and then so. The next day, um, I I don't know where that was coming from, but I left it alone. Then the next day, she mentioned it again, and she made a comment. And uh, we were talking about being hot and being cold. And then um, and she said something to me about, again, you know, the way I, I, I dress. And then I asked her a question again. I, I totally forgot the whole situation there at that time. And she said... Yeah, well, my mom thinks you are, my mom thinks you're not a, you're not a woman like. And I said, what? She said, yeah, she thinks you're not a girly girl because, you know, women should be wearing dresses and skirts and you don't. I said, because I'm not. But I I told her, does that make me like a man because I'm not wearing (laughs) a skirt or a dress? 
She goes, no, I know you're a girl. I said, okay. And so now I knew where that came from then. So it made me realize, damn, that, you know, her mom probably every time she sees me, she's thinking, yeah, she's got to be, you know what I mean? Like she, she has this view of me and has this judgment on me of who she thinks I am based on my appearance. And today, this this girl, um, I was she was running, and she said, "Oh, I can run run a lap around here." I said, "Go ahead." And then there's bushes, right? And she said, "I almost tried to jump. I almost wanted to jump over that, but I stopped." I said, "Why did you stop? I know you can do it." And she said, "Because I stopped because I realized, wait, what am I doing? I'm a girl." Then I asked her again, "What's wrong with jumping over the bushes if you're a girl?" She goes, because girls don't really do that. I said, okay. So I really try to dig deeper, you know, in what she believes in and what she's being taught. Now I'm thinking she's being taught something at home of what, you know, the parents believe, right? And this is how they're raising her with the female should be a certain way and male should be a certain way. And so she told me, yeah, well, only boys or, you know, does stuff like that. Girls are just right here holding their skirts, and <laughs> just standing and not playing rough like that. And I said, I get it. Okay. I thought it was very it's, interesting. That's an interesting conversation come from a person that's a young adult. Mm -hmm. So we're born as kids. We don't know what we don't know. So her assumption being that women should act like a certain way, which is women should wear skirts, high heels, and don't play with boys. That's not something you're born with. You don't sudden get loaded that. No, it's something that's taught. So someone's taught her, well, girls do this, girls do that. And kids are like a sponge. They soak up everything because their mind, they haven't lived enough to, to formulate what is right or wrong. So they either they say what's on their mind and without a filter, or they just call something what it is. Oh, my mom said, you know, you're not a girl because you don't wear skirts. Now, that's because a mom has perception of the way a woman should be and look like and behave. Now, mm -hmm. that would be thus become the child's belief system. So if someone doesn't act or behave a certain way, which was taught by her mom or by her mom's mom, then you're not ladylike. So what is it like to be a lady? See, society has all these different avenues say, well, this house should work out. This is the way something should go. It's no different than saying, well, I went to Ivy League school and I should get a great job. I had people work for Mark Zuckerberg that are more intelligent than him. Thousands. People are more smart than Mark Zuckerberg, but Mark Zuckerberg owns a company. So because we have the perception that things are supposed to be a certain way, that doesn't exist in really the reality in life. Things can be whatever you want. That's why people are separated. That's why we get separated in, in different ways, you know, because of what one believes and what the other believes, you know, what more, of course I had to kind of tell her a little bit why, but then I, I said, okay, wait, I stopped myself. I don't have to explain myself because this is me. She doesn't have to go home and tell her mom, well, this is why she's always dressed like that. Yeah. Well, you know what? I think what it is is like, okay, maybe the, the mom doesn't understand. Well, my line of work too and the things I do, I can't be doing physical education or coaching sports in my skirt <laughs> my dress, you know? Right. Or <laughs> what makes them think that I don't wear skirts and high heels outside of school? Yeah. I and I don't just, know. I, you know, and then so then here comes the whole group of kids and they were listening to this conversation. And I was just like, you know what? This is going to get bigger, right? This conversation is just going to get bigger. So I ended like this. It's, Look, I do own some skirts and dresses. So when I go out with my friends, I like to dress up sometimes. And yes, I put a little bit of makeup on. So yeah, I, I could be a female sometimes. And then I left it at that. And I just, you know, wanted, I, I, I don't know what's going on in their mind after that. And um, I, I just thought, wow, this had never happened to me before. For as long as I've been working at the school or, you know, and, and, and coaching, I've never really had, um, anyone come up to me or, or say something like that to me. But now I, th I think that, you know, um, we start, I, I started to think again of like how judgmental we could be sometimes based on a person's appearance, but whether that's good or bad, I don't know. 
you know, I, I don't think it's um, there's any intentions to that. It's just the way I am viewed and the way they look at me. You know, I don't, I don't want to think of it as to them. It was a bad thing. It could be it could be in their culture, too, you know, because their culture. So certain cultures have different beliefs. Mm hmm. And that's the sad part. So it's funny thing is after that conversation, after you had to talk with this particular person, then you now need to defend yourself of why you do what you do. Like, well, yes, I do wear skirts because the belief now is, well, if you don't wear skirts 24-7, you're not a lady. <laughs> that's the belief right there. Mm -hmm. Not like, well, she may not wear it now because she can't because of the activity. So now you give them more context. The con Before the context was, if you're a lady, you should wear a skirt. 24 7 no i'm a lady and i do wear skirts when it's appropriate so if i'm at the gym if i'm teaching if i'm doing this i may not wear a skirt matter of fact i may not wear like wear a skirt at all i don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. but it's just funny how we, we walk around with this um this paradigm blindness which i always say it's, it's your perceptions your belief systems and interpretations of what you think is real for you real period and it's based upon experiences what is really different amongst everybody else so once you learn how to navigate these perceptions i think society will start to change more but until we, we realize that it's our perceptions our judgments that are causing it to be held back the difference in politics people are judging because you have an opinion about something you no know, you're different so you're wrong and that, that's not wrong yeah and i was asked i was telling a friend about this and i was laughing when i was telling them the story and i was asked if i was offended by it. i said no i wasn't offended by it i honestly wasn't um i think you know, like I said earlier in the beginning of this podcast, I think, you know, we, we come to this freestyle Thursday and we just talk about anything and we always end up with some kind of topic anyway. Right. So yeah. like what, what I said in the beginning of this podcast is that, you know, everyone is entitled to their opinion. And I know that everyone judges. I I'm guilty of it. I still catch myself judging others from the their appearance. So we tend to judge the book by its cover. But mm -hmm. because you and I have gone through some digging deeper, deep down in us and this training that we are more aware now. Um, we get, we're more curious now before we judge somebody, we are more curious about this person before judging, judging, right? So, you know, we've gone through these changes and, you know, a lot of people is not going to realize that there's still, you know, there's still going to be a lot of people walking around, you know, judging the book by its cover. And that's what's happening. And no, I wasn't offended by it. Um, I didn't, I just, to me, I thought it was funny. Um, I laughed about it because coming from a little girl, I thought it was, you know, it was interesting and how she was actually staring at me and looking at me from head to toe. And she brought up, you know, that conversation, but it's fine. I'm, I'm okay with it because that's how I am. <laughs> That's how I dress. That's how I walk around. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. So that that's what it is. And I think, you know, before um, we end this podcast, and like I said, I think we always come up with, with a topic here, even if we say there's no topic. You know, like today was pretty much just about your perception on things and people, the assumptions, um, judging and what else did we say? Opinions. Do your mm -hmm. research. <laughs> facts. Context. Facts. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Get your facts right. Do get your context right. Do your research. What I, what, I, what do you think? Is it assumption or is it what you think is real? So check in, check in, check in, check in, and keep checking in. Because the whole purpose of, of this is really to challenge yourself. Instead of saying, this is, this is what, this is nothing, nothing. Meaning, I'll give you a perfect example of that we have this idea, which is true in a lot of, in a lot of cases, you have to go to college to be successful. I know a lot of educated fools. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that work with their fries that this one guy I never get his name. He had double master's degree with working with fries electronics because he made poor decisions in his life, which lost all the money he had and respect he had for people. He lost his license. His, his two degrees from two Ivy League schools couldn't make it. Working in fries, electronics, and computer sales. 
at the time, guy, I was in my 20s, the guy's probably in his late 30s to 40s. I looked at that. I don't want that to be me. <laughs> so, you know, once we start changing the way we view life, life then opens up like a beautiful rose and we can see life for much more than what we think it is. And we can actually propel ourselves better in better directions once we know there is more than what we think is. And that's how we maintain success, happiness, love, encouragement, spirituality, uh, religion, if you, whatever religion you have. And obviously it strengthens the relationships around different people because we have a different set of outlook for different things. So as always, guys, I hope you guys learn from something of this podcast that will better your life for the future. I think the other day we had mental health day last week. There's so many days outside the major holidays I don't remember anymore. So I think we have a mental health day because mental health is very paramount amongst everybody. You can be have zero money in your pocket or the person doesn't have an education to the person that has two, two degrees, mental health is important because it helps you structure your life. It helps your family around you. It has, brings more peace to your life and more love to your life. So you live a more better and, and encouraging life. So thank you again for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. And this is Freestyle Thursday. And again, this is Gloria, your life coach. Thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle.